All right, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. We're uh, live. Uh, welcome to James Bond Bitcoin Live episode 0061, hashtag lockdown. And so in this episode, we're going to talk about Eric Voorhees. We're going to talk about his prison program that he has. Uh, also in the notes section, uh, I have a lot of uh, videos uh, about Eric Voorhees, uh, a, a recent video that I could find where he, he does talk about scaling. Um, he talks about blockchain. He talks about the current environment of, of the community. Um, that is July 31st, Rocky Mountain blockchain. Let me see here. Rocky Mountain blockchain interview with Eric Voorhees. So um, there's that in the notes section. Also, um, in the notes section is uh, another video of Eric Voorhees back in 2013 in San Jose when he was doing the conference. Uh, Eric Voorhees, The Role of Bitcoin as Money, Bitcoin 2000, 2013 conference. So it gives you an idea of how much has changed uh, 2013 and 2017, which is a four-year difference. So, you know, in, in cryptocurrency, everything seems to, uh, you take you take your amount of time you've been in this space and times it by four, that's what it feels like how much time has gone by. So just to give you a perspective of Eric Voorhees 2013 and Eric Voorhees 2017, to give you a perspective on that. And also in the notes section, I have uh, two posts, two blog posts, one written by Eric Voorhees again. It's thoughts on SegWit 2 MB, 2 megabyte, AKA SegWit 2X by Eric Voorhees, April 2nd, 2017, Bitcoin blockchain. And then a reply, a blog post that's a reply um, by an unknown pirate is the author's name. My thoughts on your thoughts is a reply to Eric Voorhees' um, blog post. And we'll be talking about these things. I'm just letting you know what's in the notes section. Also, uh, Coinami has a response to how they're going to handle the, uh, the hard fork as well. And that's also in the notes, uh, notes section. That was just a Reddit post. And so uh, today, um, also, Brian here is here with me as well. So if you're wondering if, where's Brian, well, he's here. Go ahead and say hi, Brian. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, lots going on. Glad you're glad you're here. Excellent. So let me uh, go ahead and, and read uh, read the uh, the meme for today, which is it's not really much to read actually. <laughs> it's this is his. Uh, he's been pushing this thing called Prism, but it sounds so much like Prison. I figured I might as well play with that. And I changed a few things. So uh, it says here, Prison, Portfolio Market by Shapeshift, Intro to Prison, Eric Voorhees, Shapeshift CEO. And I got a picture of him, which this is the picture that he used that I just found on the internet. It looks like a mugshot picture. So I figured I'd use it as a mugshot picture and, and then put hashtag yes2x number 494784. Do you, do you know what that number represents, Brian? Uh, the current block number? Very close. It's not the current block number, but that is the block number in which the planned hard fork of SegWit2x is going to happen. And so that's that's what I put in there. So uh, if you, if you want to see the real time of the block supposed uh, uh, activation. On the left side, there's a QR code with the little clock. If you scan that, that will take you to this here. And let me put a full screen on it. There you go. It'll take you to the SegWit 2X activation count countdown timer. And so we have exactly 44 days, 16 hours, 6 minutes, and 29 seconds, 28 seconds. So if you want to keep track of that, uh, that's what the QR code is for. 
Let me see it back up here. So that's what that is. And so, do you, Brian, do you know um, about Eric Voorhees? You, you used Shapeshift before. Is that correct? Yeah, I've used it. And um, do you know anything about his other platform called Prism? Or I like to call no. Prison? No, not really. Just the little bit we've discussed before. Well, I've, I've been you know, looking into it, and I've, I've seen a lot of videos. And it seems like the, what, what Eric Voorhees is proposing, and I think this was his idea came about as Ethereum was being uh, launched with their ICO um, platform. And at the time, I guess there was no SEC ruling or open letter to the community that the DAO was a security. So this this prison platform basically allows uh, an individual like you and I to open an account with Shapeshift Prison and basically have a port make a portfolio of you know different tokenized assets for the most part and cryptocurrencies and um i'm, I'm not sure if they're gonna actually if they actually possess the tokens or they'll have the tokens but your portfolio is just a representation of the tokens at hand i don't know if there's really tokens or not i think there is because it's supposed to be decentralized in other words um y you'll be the owner of that portfolio and the platform will be, I guess, holding it somehow. You don't, you know, they don't have any control of it, but at the same time, you, or the, I guess you both have custody of this, this portfolio. But the interesting part about the, the prison portfolio market is that your portfolio can become a token or it can be tokenized. And so you could have other people buy into the token that represents your portfolio which eventually will probably buy everything in your portfolio as well proportionate to what you have in there and then based on how well you pick your portfolio is how well the token does to the person who who uh, probably you know bought it and so um the reason i call it prison is because it's it literally sounds like a way to do uh uh, how can I say this? It, it sounds like you can securitize, uh, like a, like as if it's an ETF. Like you could take a bunch of uh, tokens, which I think are already securities, and so you're you're taking securities, putting into uh, into a portfolio, and then you're taking that portfolio, and then you're making a security out of that for others to trade on, and based on the performance of how you picked your portfolio, is how well the token will do. Sounds like poppycock to me. <laughs> well, it's, it sounds like, you know, at the time when he came up with this concoction that there was, I, I think there was no SEC ruling or SEC letter. And so the assumption or the business model he built or imagined was that he could just basically create a, a portfolio ETF, but he's not creating it. Uh, the users are creating it and using Ethereum or the Ethereum blockchain, you can tokenize the user's portfolio and have the users, right, make an ETF and, and just bring it out to market themselves if they wish to. And other people can basically invest into their portfolio. So uh, I don't know. I haven't heard much about this program since then. But I'm pretty. I, I'm not a. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a, you know, regulator or anything. But I'm pretty sure this sounds like you're you're making a, a security. Uh, I don't care if it's decentralized or not. Uh, the fact that you you know there's already uh, questions about Ethereum tokens already being a security, but then you're actually putting a portfolio of uh, cryptocurrencies and Ethereum tokens. That are, that are may or may not be securities into a portfolio, and then 
tokenizing the portfolio, it sounds like you're really making uh, a security within a security within a security. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone's going to go to prison for this. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the meme here. That's the joke is, is prison. Yeah. Do you want the SEC? Because this is how you get the SEC. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and that mugshot right there. Well, maybe they don't have to take a picture. They already got one, and I think they should use this one exactly the way it is, where he has a hashtag yes two x block number four nine four seven eight four. That'd be awesome if they use that for a mugshot. <laughs> well, we'll uh, we'll put this meme out, and uh, maybe it will propagate. And if things go your way, uh, it could happen. Maybe, maybe. Uh, and the other thing is, I've been experimenting with new time lock addresses. Have you ever heard of those? With what? New time lock address. I've heard of them. I haven't checked them out yet. Tell me more. They're they're very similar to a multi signature. The only difference is that they're based on a certain time or block number. And so you can basically lock down your Bitcoins. Well, since I use Bitcoin, uh, you can lock down your Bitcoin to either a certain date or an actual block. And so uh, I have here in the middle the big Bitcoin symbol. Within the Bitcoin symbol, I have a QR code. If you scan that, It'll take you. Uh, it will take you to a verification web page of a uh, time locked Bitcoin. Now, if you're savvy enough and you understand what this is, you'll be able to free up that Bitcoin. You'll be able to take it out of jail, so to speak, and that Bitcoin's yours if you know how to free it. And so th that's why this episode is hashtag locked down. And so if people know how to use this, I think this is a tool that uh, could be useful for people who have a HODL problem because you can literally lock down your, your Bitcoins for whatever time period. And if you're a HODLer, I think this is a good way from panic selling. That, that's pretty interesting. Um, does it have any other benefits? I'm, I'm trying to think of some right off the bat. Well, the reason I'm starting, I looked into that. Um, well, uh, other than benefits as if, let's say, you want to pass down your Bitcoin to somebody, but you don't want to do it right now because maybe, maybe you want them to have it until they're of age. So you could set the time date when they're 18 or 24 or 30 or whatever age as an inheritance. And then you can give them this, um, well, you can give them either the way I, I have it set up, uh, the verification because it comes with the redeem script with the address and the, um, the, the lock time address and uh, with that information you should be able to unlock the key or unlock um, the uh, the lockdown address and extract the Bitcoin so if you have a specific time or date you want something to be released uh, you can do that or you can um, use it in, in a actual contract like something's paid for and you want it released at another at a date in the future, at a specific date in the future, uh, you can do that. Um, I've the reason, but my original reason was I've heard that you could use this to split your Bitcoin, your legacy Bitcoin, and your um, Segwit two X Bitcoin. So that's why I'm playing around with it. And uh, since I never used it. Um, I figure I might as well learn maybe sometime in the future this might come in very, very handy. And I think it's also another way of doing a treasure hunt. All right. Okay. So I'm going to check this out. 
Well, just to let you, well, if you, if you, if you do scan on it, uh, the lockdown time is until next Sunday. So by the time you and I come back together, we'll be, we'll find out if anyone was able, was smart enough to, to, to figure out how to free up this Bitcoin. Well, hmm. all right. I'm not going to ask any questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so go ahead and scan that if you want to free that Bitcoin. Uh, all part of the prison meme here. So let me go on to the next one here. Uh, so so here's the medium post by the author, the pirate who can't be named. This is the reply to here. This post by Eric Voorhees. Thoughts on Segwit 2MB, aka Segwit 2X. So I'm just going to go back and forth between them. Um, I'm going to talk about this one because this is the article or the medium post that I sent to you, Brian, which you had time to read. I just found the other one, so uh, um, you know I, I guess we can't talk about it too much because I barely read it. What are your thoughts on on this response to Eric Voorhees' um, blog post? Well, I, I did read this um, without having read what he's responding to. So it was interesting, first of all. But I don't know. He does a good job of uh, going back through some of the things Voorhees has said. Um, I believe the pirate who can't be named uh, makes a very good argument here against Segwit2x, saying that it's addressing a false narrative, which is block size. And he claims that the real issue that will be causing a bottleneck on the blockchain are the unspent transaction lists which everyone will have to download. And as more people get into Bitcoin and more people are uh, purchasing Bitcoin and then spending them and sending out more unspent transactions into the world, that that will become the big issue. And that Segwit2x does not even address this. And because uh, uh, it does not address this and Voorhees pushes it so hard that he claims that Voorhees has no fundamental understanding of the blockchain or the scaling debate or issues inherent in scaling uh, in the future. Yeah, I, I read that too, and uh, I do agree with you on that. Uh, I do agree with this author. It, this author seems like not only is this person um, seem intelligent enough to realize that, but also is a developer. And he's also trying to say that, or she, well, I don't know who it is, it's pirate, but the, the pirate who can't be named here, uh, not only tries to convey that there's a technical, right, there's a technical issue, but at the same time, you know, he is a developer. He's also trying to say they're not blind to the social issues here. They understand the social issues. But but they have to but they're they they understand that, but they're this is not a social issue. This is a technical issue that has to be resolved. And it and it says right here in in, in bold in bold uh, text here, and I'll also uh, highlight it. It is completely impossible for any fully validating Bitcoin node, whether they are miners or not, to function without the entire UTXO set. And so that's what you were talking about. It doesn't matter if they have a two megabyte or a one megabyte. Um, nodes can't function whether they you're a miner or you're you're um, a merchant or just a simple user who wants to, you know, have their own Bitcoin node. You have to have the entire UTXO set, which is unspent transaction output. And so. Uh, as more and more people get involved in using Bitcoin, that amount of information 
just gets bloated. And that's the problem. And he's trying to say that's the real problem. Okay. The block size is not the problem. The problem is how many you, you know outputs there are. How many times do you split your Bitcoin by spending it and receiving it and using it? The more it gets used, the bigger that gets. And that's the problem. And so he's trying to address that. And, um, you know, I, I put both articles out there for, for the readers to see um, that, you know, there's two sides, all right? I'm, I'm showing you one side, and then I'm going to show you the other side. And hopefully you can come up with your own conclusions. But as far as I can read, I mean, Brian, you can read. I'm assuming you, un you understand what you're reading. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a, a developer, but I'm able to kind of understand what this person is trying to tell me. And then I'm reading Eric Voorhees, which I know you haven't read it yet, but, um, you know, people in the audience can read and they can come up with their own conclusions. Well, Brian, are you there? Did I lose yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. So uh, what I'm wondering is, after you read this, and we've already talked about some of this stuff, um, what were the things that you, I know we talked about before, but um, I think there's some things here that he mentions that could reduce or lessen that bloat. Did you want to mention some of those things or some of the things that you thought were interesting? Well, um, well yeah, and, and the users can, the viewers can see them on the screen now, but uh, he believes a segregated witness will help uh, decrease that issue. And that's going to be a layer on top of the Bitcoin network. So me, I'm, uh, I've been skeptical of segregated witness the more I learn about it. So it may be a solution. Um, and it's probably better than SegWit 2x. So at least we have it and it exists, right? And it's working. We've proven that with the treasure hunt wallets. Yes, yes. That we, we, I've been using the treasure hunt wallets, although you've been the most, you've been the main benefactor of the treasure hunt wallets. So, uh, and I guess you know how to, how to, how to sweep those keys. Uh, surprisingly, uh, I'm not sure if anybody else knows because they haven't quite yet which kind of concerns me a little bit. Um, I'm not for sure about encrypted ones, but unencrypted ones, that's pretty simple. Yeah, very simple. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, this, uh, the author also mentions uh, SCO, SCONER signatures, which um, I've been playing around with a lot of uh, multi-signature type of addresses um, or contract addresses that start with the three multi-signatures would be one uh, time lock addresses would be another one which i also think is um segwit addresses are very similar in that way as well uh, but sconer signatures looks like what they'll do is um let me see it'll add some benefits uh let's see here the this scales uh this scales to help users business coin joins and other and anything where the signers can interact or a single signer needs to make multiple signatures and it looks like it also uh, makes it indistinguishable from regular addresses so uh, you know that multi signatures start with the three um, time lock addresses start with the three and segwit addresses start with the three I think if they Im implement the the sconer signatures they'll all look like regular addresses. So you can't tell the difference between the other. Right, you get that privacy benefit. The, the other issue that uh, he had addressed earlier uh, in the article was the fact that signatures on transactions take up a certain amount of uh, data, a certain amount of room in the block. And if you have lots of inputs, uh, that signature is going to use up 
on every single one of those transactions, unspent transactions, more memory, which will end up, you know, causing more bloat. And so these signatures are supposed to um, decrease that aspect of the UTXO's uh, bloat just by, um, I guess, making it to where you don't have to have the a signature on every single one of those. That somehow it just one signature will cover all of them, which lessens the amount of space needed, which theoretically reduces any problems, bottleneck, scaling, otherwise. Yes, that that's. Uh, I'm assuming that's that's correct according to this article. Um, right. I, I don't it, know if that's true. I don't, yeah, it hasn't I don't, been it hasn't been added quite yet. <laughs> so. But, but it'll be interesting to see if it when it when it does happen. You know, the interesting thing is I noticed that all of this could potentially be, be added to the the other chain, uh, Segwit two X as well, because they're both Segwits. Um, the question is, you know, when you reduce it by that much, when you take out all the information or the bytes out of out of the blocks like that, what is what's the point of increasing it to two megabytes? You know? And and with all these new features that are coming, uh, the the next one I I haven't heard a lot about, um, but it's mask Merkleized abstract syntax tree. Um, looks like that's another one. Let me see. What this uh, this takes more complex contracts and drastically lessens the amount of data as they externalize onto the network in order to process. So it looks like this is another one where it'll take a lot of information out of the blocks. And also, uh, looks like it's allows for more s smarter contracts. I'm assuming more. <laughs> uh, I I'm not sure if it's going to be more like Ethereum kind of contracts, but there's another one there. I have to do some research. And then um, Lightning, uh, I've done. I've looked into that quite a bit. Are you st are you still skeptical uh, about Lightning, Brian? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. This is one of the second layer uh, technologies that they want to put on top of Bitcoin that I'm skeptical, very skeptical of. Um, I think each of these are, are adding weak points to what is uh, otherwise a secure network. Yeah. Uh, but hey, I'm not a developer. I don't understand things. I barely understand a Merkle tree sometimes. So what do I know? <laughs> well, you know, uh, I barely understand anything myself, but uh, I am curious, and that curiosity, you know, curiosity leads me to do more research. And so, uh, you don't have to be a master at to understand things, but you have to know enough to actually to try to understand. And so, if anything, um, you know, if if you have a curi curiosity in, in how this works, just look into it. And you'll be surprised how much you'll find out. And that way, you don't have to listen to other people like us, you know, or anybody else. You can actually do your own research and come up with your own conclusions on whether a hard fork is good, a hard fork is bad. Are these features good? Are these features bad? Uh, so, you know, that's the point I'm trying to get at in, in exposing uh, viewers to looking at this. At, at least, you know, do do some of your own research. You know, don't don't take everything anybody else says as the final answer. You know, it's a good start, but you should also look into it yourself at least. Um, so, uh, Lightning. I I I thought maybe Lightning would. I I think anything that that helps um, transaction goes faster is is helpful. Uh, I'm a little bit more willing to take that risk because it's not on the blockchain. It's it's a layer on top of it. So if it fucks up, it, it doesn't, you know, it may not fuck up the whole network. It just fucks up this little, you know, uh, uh, layer on top of Bitcoin, uh, which basically at, right at this point is an experiment as far as I can tell. And not only that, uh, it's light years away. <laughs> it is literally light years away from being in production, so um, you know there's there's no lightning nodes on Bitcoin. Uh, there's like two lightning nodes on Litecoin. Uh, there was a guy who um, 
I forgot his name, but he made a wallet and he did a lightning transaction with Charlie Lee. But the only problem is they're the only two that have lightning nodes to do the transaction. I don't know anybody else <laughs> that, that has any nodes to do lightning lightning transactions. So literally they're they are light years away from, from getting this into production. So, but after reading all this, what is your uh, overall take? I mean, he talks about Unity and SegWit, and he says it's never going to happen. I mean, what are your final thoughts on on this particular Medium post by the uh, pirate who can't be named? Well, I, I feel like the pirate who can't be named did a great job in pointing out um, what I believe also our fallacies in the yes 2x camp and the biggest one is they either don't understand the fundam the fundamental issues facing them which i find hard to believe right they're all all of them are intelligent people right with computer science and this and that they should understand how it works so what this tells me is they're willfully ignorant for their own reasons. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you on that. Um, this is um, Eric Voorhees' thoughts on SegWit. And uh, I, just, I just had a barely, I just found it. And so I just barely had a chance to read it. But there's no... You know, as far as I can read down here, there's nothing technical here for me to read. He's not conveying any uh, technical solutions. Eric Voorhees is literally, you know, um, offering social solution, emotional solutions to SegWit 2X and why, you know, it's a good thing. And the only thing I, I took away from this was the reason why it's a good thing is because he, well, obviously he's agreed to it, but he feels that it will bring the community together or most of the community together and that it will allow Bitcoin to go forward. But from what I understand of SegWit2x is that it more or less um, forces you to pick a, a chain and not only that, it, it it actually replaces the development team. And so I I don't know how he can rally behind this knowing that 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 it's contentious. It will split the community. And also there's also technical issues in this. I, well, I know you didn't have a chance to read this, Brian, but I, I, go ahead. What the from what you just said, it actually makes sense with what I just said, which was um, these people understand the technical side of things. If they're not pointing that out, it's for a reason. So if he makes no technical arguments whatsoever, it's because he has none at his disposal and knows it. So he has to go a different route. Yeah, I, 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 after, um, I guess, uh, have a chance to read it, Brian. Um, sorry I didn't send it to you. I just found it. I was looking for this article so I can compare the two, but I, I just recently found it. But, um, yeah, there's, from what, from reading this, offers no technical solution other than the fact that if we, if his argument is basically, if you follow us, okay, if you follow us, all right, if everybody follows us, we'll be united again. That's that's a that's the only thing <laughs> I got out of this uh, article. So and hashtag yes to X. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <It's> literally. <laughs> bringing a whole new meaning to segregated witness. <laughs> so, so. Uh, you know, if anybody's watching, go ahead and please read. I want you to read both sides and come to your own conclusion. Um, but if if you like reading a heart-bleeding novel, 
and you're a sucker for you know a bleeding heart or a plea to emotion and only emotion then by all means uh i'm sure you're gonna support segwit 2x but if you if you have like any you know ability to read and comprehend what you're reading you, you'll see there's a there's a difference between the two and uh this brings me brings me back to Oh, no, that's not what I want. Brings me back to this. If I've noticed all the people who signed the New York agreement, they, they, they all have something in common. They have a, like a huge monetary incentive to go on this path. All right? Forget the technical aspects or any science involved any computer science involved and go on emotion go on you know uh community uh their their whole plea is to the community to follow them and has nothing to do with any reason or or uh what i would say is technical or scientific um they the the problem is pretty obvious and they they're ignoring it so their motivation i've noticed has to be that they have a financial incentive to do this and i think that's what's really really skewing their judgment you know uh if you look at roger ver he has made investments in mining with jihan wu uh, he's made a lot of investments in in Bitcoin businesses that, you know, rely on this idea that you could buy coffee with your Bitcoin. Um, and so even even the miners have an incentive uh, because they rely on uh, the Bitcoins to, I guess, increase the, the argument I heard for increasing the block size is that it would slow the propagation and it would give the miners in a particular geographic area a mining advantage. So everything points to an economic incentive that I think is the reason why they're going, they're blind to the situation. This article was from back in April, that was six months ago. Um, we haven't really heard anything from him since, have we? No, we have not heard. We haven't heard a peep from him. And we haven't heard a peep from a lot of people. So considering that, you know, you would, you would think that maybe a lot of people would be like unite. I haven't seen that unity. You know, I, I, I've actually, as closer we come, um, you know, I've seen more division and more people starting to like uh, take root in their division. Uh, you know, I see, I'm seeing more hashtag no, no 2x. I'm seeing more people being more vocal. Um, I've seen other people at the same time say, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's just get this over us. Let's, let's just split. So, so you people, the hashtag yes 2 X people can go your way and the rest of us, you know, who are happy with what we have right now, we got SegWit into the blockchain, we'll go on our own path and we'll see who's, who's, who, who's been on the right side of history. And I think this is going to be natural. This should be natural. And unfortunately, um, you know, the SegWit 2 X people, or yeah, Segwit 2x people, um, they've kind of forced it. They're forcing the issue. They're they're literally forcing each other's hand to to cause this division because again, there's no replay protection. They're literally trying to overtake Bitcoin and keep the brand and you know kill off the other chain. Um, no replay protection. Also, you know, I'm not, I'm not too happy about that because they're risking these, these 
groups of people are risking my my Bitcoin at their expense. I know they have Bitcoin, but what about all the other people who have Bitcoin? Why are we risking our Bitcoin at their expense? Because they want to do a hard fork with no replay protection. Well, ever since I got into the space, there's been a fight. There's been a fight before I got into the space about what to do for over a year about the supposed scaling issue. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. <laughs> you know, yeah. As as I look more into it, I, I'm 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 seeing that there is a corporate interest, and it seems like the corporate interests want something that's not really there. They're looking for something that's not really there, and then you have a the the development interest. And so far, it's really been, what I've noticed has been a fight between miners and some corporate interest or business facilitators. And then the it's been a fight against the developers and I think users, it's, it's almost been an, an attack against the users and the development team. And I, I don't know how else I can explain that. That's That's what I can surmise from everything that I've seen. And so um, there is there is a division. Uh, I don't know if the split will solve this, but if it does, if, if it does split, you know, we should be able to do, we should just part ways. We shouldn't have to fight for the house, for the dishes, for the kids, for the car, for the dog, you know, just just split, just go your own way Develop your the way you want Bitcoin to be what you think is Bitcoin, but you know don't you know don't try to overtake the brand and the name. Um, you know, call it Bitcoin Two X, whatever. <laughs> if they want Bitcoin in the name, but that they're you know it seems like they're really trying to overtake the whole enchilada and and you know kill off the other chain. Um, you know what? What are your thoughts on this, Brian? I mean, is uh, are you are you having the same kind of concerns, or um, how how are you thinking this is going to turn out? Well, I feel like the people are going to continue to fight against two <coughs> X, and that is going to cause it not to happen. And people are going to back out of the agreement, and there won't be enough power to do a hard fork. And if there is one, it'll peter out real quick. So you think if it does split, one chain will definitely die out? I think they're going to find they do not have as many people back in them, and they'll be the chain that loses out even with all of their investments and equipment and everything else. Maybe I'm just being naive or overly optimistic. I'm unsure. Well, let's, I guess we could talk about that because people have dropped out. You know, they're not, they're not mining. Well, one mining pool has said that they would drop out. They're not interested in, in hard forking. And then we had some other business interest back out as well um, but I think there's enough there may be enough hashing power and enough businesses that, that have already committed themselves to doing this I mean it's hard to back out when you said that you were gonna do this and the fact that they're really quiet and they haven't said anything kinda tells me that um, they don't want to admit their mistake and if they don't want to admit their mistake, they're going to go ahead and just continue on, even though that this may not work well. Um, you know, their denial or they have their blinders on, and they're not listening. From what I can tell, they're not listening. They, they're not listening to me. You know, I make these memes every day. 
I don't know if anybody's actually <laughs> seeing them or not, but I'm making these memes for a reason is because I think there's some people out there who don't want this hard fork. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, are you are you interested in seeing this hard fork, Brian? Not really. And so, you know, there, there is an issue that the, you know, these business interests and miners have the community at, in, at their best interest, at the, you know, that what they think they're doing is right. But I don't think so. I think they're, they're justifying their interest and somehow they're, they're personifying that as if they're doing it for the community or the, to the users, that this would unite the users. But uh, it, it doesn't seem that way. It, it, it seems like they're, they're, they're delusional because they have a financial interest. Uh, because when, when they set up their businesses, uh, their business model was based on um, a plan that it doesn't work now. And so they, they have no choice but to try to take over and force it to work. And the users are seeing past it, and they're still not listening. They're still not listening to, to any reason. Anyways, let me uh, cut to this. OK, so now we're getting to the pot of gold. I haven't checked the address. Um, I'm assuming Brian, you haven't cracked the code either. No, I, I haven't. I haven't made an attempt on the pot of gold. Okay. Well, I, I haven't checked the address, but I'm going to plug this in on every ep episode, and hopefully somebody will donate and maybe even crack the code. Uh, I haven't checked the address, but again, uh, an idea from Yellow Fever and. The QR code on the bottom there is the link to the channel to Yellow Fever. So if you want to check out his channel, go ahead. So let me see what else I got here in the in the thing here. OK, yes, the, uh, I think I already talked about this. Uh, so 40, 44 days until SegWit countdown, the activation countdown timer. Uh, what are your what are you going to do, Brian? Do you have any plans? or any I, I ideas on what to do uh, before the SegWit? Are you making any preparations? Yeah, I've got a few acres um, in an undisclosed location that uh, myself and a few close friends and family members are going to go up to a couple days in advance. And we're just going to wait it out for a week and see what happens. <laughs> that, that sounds like a great plan. Uh, I <laughs> Do you, do you know um, if um, I know that uh, Coinami uh, finally made a response to uh, the hard fork that's coming up? They said they would support it, and uh, of course, I think they would because they they offer a shapeshift and they offer a lot of altcoins. They did uh, support Bitcoin Cash. So uh, I think they will offer or support the SegWit 2x hard fork. It makes sense because they're a multi-currency wallet. Um, do you think it's going to be easy to split your coins with Coinami? I'm not even for sure if I'd want to try. Um, I guess we'll have to wait. I mean, they're going to put out some sort of a guide like they did before the Bitcoin Cash. But yeah, I'm, I'm uncertain. You know, it's a hard fork, and I guess that's a little bit different than you said the fiction. So it uh, makes me not want to do anything with my coins. In fact, I've got 44 more days left to figure out what I'm going to do with my coins. Yeah, 44 days, 15 hours, 21 minutes, and 44 seconds. <clears throat> So <laughs> to be exact, uh, the way this thing works is um, it's obviously uh, the hard fork is, is going to be on block 4, 9, 4, 7, 8, 4, uh, 
1,784 block. Uh, so uh, as closer it gets, this is just a rough estimate. The closer we get, it's going to be more and more accurate. So uh, it's just an estimate. Um, I'm going to, I, I have Bitcoins. Um, I have like the treasure hunt Bitcoins uh, still out there. I have some other Bitcoins from the treasure hunt that I just put in different wallets. I put them in um, just a regular wallet. I put them into uh, compressed and uncompressed wallets. I put them in SegWit wallets. I've, uh, I'm, I put them in time locked wallets. Uh, I'll try to put them in a multi-signature. So I'm going to put all these, you know, five dollars worth or whatever's worth of Bitcoin in in these different types of wallets or different types of ways you could put your Bitcoins into. And then at the time, and of course I'll have them in the paper wallet. So when the hard fork, if it happens or when it does, uh, when it when it hard forks, I'm going to actually do a test, and I'm going to try to split them, and I'm going to see which one works. And then on top of that, I'm hoping that as closer we get to uh, the hard fork, more information will come out in how to safely split your coins. That's if you want to split your coins. Um, the, the worst case scenario, uh, the ultimate fallback is just don't use your Bitcoins anymore from that point in time. <laughs> I guess is the safest, the safest way. Uh, so that's that's kind of what I'm looking into the the time lock because you could probably lock it for a very very long time and and you'll know those bitcoins are not going anywhere and so if if, if you had a replay for whatever reason on on those bitcoins they won't move on the legacy chain but the thing is you have to lock them in before the hard fork so I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna I'm gonna lock in all my bitcoins like that. Um, the other thing I heard is uh, after the hard fork, um, there might be addresses on on the chains that don't exist on the other chain. And so if you could generate an address that doesn't exist on the other chain, uh, you could split them that way. Um, but I'm wondering if it's safe because if, if it's not on the other chain and it does get replayed, then will th those Bitcoin not go in the anywhere the ones that don't have a, an address on on the other chain will they not go anywhere or will they just disappear so uh, I'm not technically savvy to answer that yet but that's a concern I do have um, the third thing I've heard is using um, mixers or uh, addresses that are unique to the chain and sending it to those and then having the person who owns that address basically send them out to different addresses. So uh, that would be a mixer of some kind or even a, a, a miner who might have an address that's unique to each chain that you could send to and then send out. So I'm not sure. I'm a little concerned because um, there's, there's no definite answer so far. Well, as it gets closer, there will be some folks who uh, will give instructional guides. Different wallets will discuss how they're going to handle it and what steps people need to take. I don't know about this uh, addresses that's on one network but not the other network. Um, I'm not going to do anything. And I was about to say my coins again, but what's funny is unless you own more than 1.00 Bitcoins, then you don't have coins. You've got Satoshis. <laughs> well, you got fractions of Bitcoin. so <laughs> <laughs> My fractions. But you, you, I guess I guess you're right. But but you you know it doesn't really matter, right? We can go back to to the eighth place, eighth decimal places, a hundred millions worth of satoshis. But yeah, but I guess you're right. We're we're using satoshis, 
And, uh, you know, I've got some for the treasure hunt that I'm using, you know, as you know, uh, embedding them on into the picture or putting the actual uh, private keys, encrypted private keys. Uh, this one recently, uh, let me see if I can go back here. This one here is actually a time locked, uh, I guess, key. Uh, I don't know if it's a it's a time log redemption script is what it is, and so it's not really a key, but it kind of is a key, and so you should be able to unlock uh, the bitcoins and extract it. So, um, you know, I'm experimenting with those. So, uh, gosh, you know, I forgot what what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> Um, That's all right. At the end of the day, we were talking about hashtag no two x. Yes, hashtag no two x. But I'm I'm pushing the hashtag yes two x to get people like thinking about this and and scared. But uh, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's working. I I hope it's it's arousing people's awareness in this situation because please do not leave it up to other people. You know, this is going to affect you. So if you leave it up to the miners and to these, uh, you know, corporate interest, uh, you, you're looking at the old system again. And for me, that's kind of not what Bitcoin is or cryptocurrencies. If you're going to let cryptocurrencies fall back to that kind of a system, you, you might as well just go ahead and use PayPal or open a bank account, or stick to a credit card. Um, if you want to move forward with this idea of um, where you own your own money and you can do things with your, your money as a user and the user has the power to do what they want to do, then you should really you know, consider which side of the fork you're going to support. So let me see what what's the last thing I got here. I know I have another one. Oh, okay, that's right. Drink drink water. Um, the last thing I want to talk about was uh, B gold. Do you think that's a distraction, Brian, from the hard fork that's coming up? I have no idea what the hell B gold is. Beagle, well, okay, go ahead, Brian. Sorry. No, please enlighten me. Well, well, I th uh, Beagle is is a quote unquote friendly fork, and supposedly, um, you know, it's it's happening October twenty fifth, so just halfway through into the hard fork of of Segwit two X, and I personally think it's just a distraction, and it's to inoculate. If I said it right, inoculate. I don't know what that. I'm trying to say, but it's it's to get us used to having hard forks, and that the Segwit 2x is just an another hard fork that will give you more coins, but in actuality, it may actually not give you more coins. It may. It may <laughs> help you lose some of your coins. Do you have to do any type of registration or anything to get your Bitcoin gold? I'm thinking it's just like Bitcoin Cash. You just have to have a private key, and you can just split them. And they'll have replay protection. Um, it's it's very similar to the way it's that's set up. It's just like Bitcoin Cash where... Uh, you either have the wallets uh, split them for you, um, probably similar to like uh, the Tracers, the Ledgers, and then probably similar to Coinami where they'll have a way to split them. And then, of course, you'll have your your paper wallets, or if you if you control your private keys, you'll just be able to split them from, uh, you know, extracting from your private keys. So it's it's it seems kind of weird the timing of B gold it, it just comes out of nowhere, and it's it was introduced through a YouTuber who 
I wouldn't say he's known for, you know, um, being independent. You know, if you give this guy enough, you know, money or, or a favor, he'll introduce anything on his, almost anything on his platform. Well, hopefully it'll, uh, it'll go up a higher in price than Bcash has. Because I have a few more Satoshi than I had at the Bcash split. And uh, we can get out at the high point. <laughs> yeah. Get more Bitcoin. Yay. Well, you know, I haven't turned my wallet. I haven't, I haven't done anything with my wallet. Um, as far as I'm concerned, my, my paper wallet with the private key is not only worth the value of Bitcoin, but it's also worth the value of Bcash. And if B gold splits, it's also going to be worth the value of B gold. So I literally have on one private key three coins. And if a SegWit happens, that'll be four coins. So I I can literally get like if I was ever to sell this paper wallet, I would literally get like like four four coins worth in, in one paper wallet. And so I, I'm wondering in the future, like how many times Bitcoin is gonna is gonna split? Like how many future friendly forks or even hostile forking or hard forking, a contentious hard fork there's going to be where twenty years later, you know, my one paper wallet has like fifty coins worth of, of money in it. Well, that's a good argument for just not splitting a wallet or two and just keeping it to the side. Yeah, you know, the hodling is is probably the safest thing you can do. You don't even have to have any technical knowledge. You can just literally just walk away from the whole thing and then when I guess you're ready to retire uh, or even pass on your 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 private key, uh, you just hand it over and it's done. There's 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 no uh, you know broadcasting. There's no signing. There's no verifying you need to do. Uh, you know you can obviously check the address key and check on all the different hard forks, all the different explorers to see what that one private key is really worth, and then. That's it. You're done with it. Uh, you can you can make an offer, you know, take it all or or leave. Uh, you got one private key worth probably potentially. I would say in in twenty years, hundreds, hundreds of millions, uh, depending on how much you have. But uh, collectively, if there's enough splits, and if there's enough hard forks, one private key could potentially be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I, I predict that'll be a news story uh, in 15, 20 years. And uh, I might have the scoop on it, and, and you might be the subject of said story. Okay. <laughs> well, well hopefully, hopefully you'll have a lot more Bitcoins yourself, and you'll be, you'll be uh, worth $100 million yourself in that time. Well, thank you. Oh, oh, Brian, did you uh, did you did you want to share anything? Uh, I think we're almost uh, at the end of the show. It's I think it's almost been has it been an hour? I'm, I'm losing track here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has been at this point. Um, I would say, uh, and looking at the time, I'm almost positive it's been over an hour. I would say that. Um, there are 44 days left. Do research. Determine where you stand on this. If you stand on the no 2x side, then do something. If you stand on the yes 2x side, go read everything again and come back and tell me which side you're on. Good advice. It. Good advice. 
my my last words is uh you know it's i think this is coming all right this has been a long time coming and um my this is how i feel about the whole situation is if there's a, a division of ideas then I think you should let it divide, but it's not going to be done in a way that we're all friendly and we're just going to like say, okay, you guys go over there and we'll be here and we're going to compete with each other. I, I think this is kind of been natural. Like if something grows, it, it usually grows to a point and then splits off and divide. Now, if this happens, the fact of the, of the matter is one side is going to survive and the other side is going to die. And I think this is a natural progress. And we need to, if we have to do this, then let's do this. But let the stronger chain prevail. And there's only one way we know we're going to find out which, which chain is the strongest chain. And that's to actually split. And so uh, I've advocated. Um, uh, I guess I always advocate. I, I always advocate confrontation because that's when you know, you know, when you add friction into a relationship, that's when you know the truth, all right? That's when you're going to find out what you're really made of and what your other counterparty is made of. Uh, and r this is just the progress of doing that. And we're going to have to find out which one is the better suited to continue. And so uh, my, I guess my message to the world is if you, if you have a troll army and, you know, you've been amassing your troll army, now is the time, all right, to use it, all right? Now is the time to use it because there's only 44 days, all right? It's going to split and you're going to have a fork and one side's going to live on and one side's going to die. Uh, I guess they, technically they can both go on, but in the end, one's going to be stronger and the other one's just going to dwindle to nothing. You know, if you ever look at evolution or uh, a tree, uh, the way things evolve, there, sometimes you, you reach one thing and then it, it increases to an apex of many things. And I think maybe just by design it naturally does that and just goes out there and survives you, you never know what's going to happen anything can happen um but at the end of the day is one of them is going to survive and the rest of them are going to die out and the one that survives is going to be is going to dominate and so uh i wish the best for each side and if you've amassed your troll army use them now so that's, that's what I have to say. Anyways, this concludes this episode. So feel free to like, dislike, leave a comment after uh, the live stream, and, or even do a video response. Until next time, stay tuned, everyone.